Welcome back. You've joined us on the Deal Tracker segment of the show and we are joined by Raja Lahiri, who's a partner at Grand Thornton Bharat, joining us now. And we have access uh, to the report which has been authored by the firm. So Raja, substantial decline and a consistent one at that when it comes to the deal flow for the last few months and um, in terms of value as well as volume. What are the factors affecting it and how much worse are you expecting it to go in the coming months? Yeah, no, absolutely rightly spotted, uh, Nisha. First of all, good afternoon to you. Uh, well, if you look at the uh, data, right, the data always gives you some sense. Uh, $1.75 billion of deals in the month of Feb 23, which is pretty much quite significantly down from prior years. If you look at the first two months of 23, $4.4 billion of deals, which is 50% plus down, again, compared to last year. So there's definitely a declining trend in deals that we are seeing. Uh, what are the two or three factors that are driving that? I think I think first is we, we've looked at the startup sector and the private equity sector really kind of the deal volumes going down. And if we've talked about the, 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 the funding winters and all of that. So that is definitely playing a part. And the yes. second is if you look at the overall macro from a global perspective, uh, there is definitely a, a dent in the sentiment in terms of deal making the interest rates and all of those kind of things of uh, impending recession coming. So right. that also plays a part in m &A and especially cross-border deal activity. So I think those two trends right. are, are playing out as we see, look at the numbers. That's right. Macros are really defining the deal street uh, and the deal flow as well. But uh, the big accident that happened was the uh, Silicon Valley Bank crisis. What is the impact on the ground on the deal street because of this, especially on the tech digital space? Yeah, I mean, candidly, you know, if you look at that, you know, it, it's, it, it is definitely an accident. It, yeah. it, Silicon Valley Bank was, was a predominantly a player in the tech segment, uh, clearly had some role in the Indian tech sector as well. But if you look at from what has happened in the last couple of days uh, with, with the kind of Fed coming in to, to bail out, I think that's a very good sign, number one. Second is... Fine, but uh, Raja, that, a lot of people want to understand, is it the Lehman movement for the startup industry? Is it going to have more contingent effect? And even if it's arrested, are more such accidents expected? What is the view coming out on the ground? And you're also in touch with many global investors. What What is the sense? Yeah, I think the sense one is getting is this uh, definitely a sense of caution. I think this is definitely an accident where the market was not expecting now, having that has happened, I think what is what is the good silver lining is that uh, the, the, there is a quick action that has been taken. So that is a positive sign, I see. The second is, uh, if you look at from a Indian tech sector perspective, uh, I think that that it has a role in terms of the sentiment, right? In terms of concrete impact on the balance sheets of companies, uh, I particularly am not kind of pessimistic on that. Uh, but definitely it will play a role in terms of sentiment. A uh, third, if you look at it, you know, we talked about the funding winter. So there was a kind of a, uh, a wind of slowdown that was happening, right? Uh, yes. But given all that, the only thing I would say is, which I always maintain, that quality companies with profitable business models will yes. always uh, win in these times as well. Because All there right. is a and lot some of, of the sectors waiting. also, Raj, Rajat, so, so let, me, uh, let me also point out that some of the sectors also remain slightly unfazed, even though the macros look uncertain going forward and the valuations have dipped and have been uncertain. And uh, we had raised this that hospitals are seeing a lot of traction. Which are the sectors at the moment still active and promoters ready to discuss the valuations which are more palatable to the investors? No, absolutely. That's a great question. I think, I think uh, you know, the sectors like healthcare, right? The entire healthcare segment we've, we've seen from COVID, etc., I think is going to really play out. The hospitals, the medical devices, the healthcare tech, all that, uh, the insurance tech, all of the allied sectors in healthcare will uh, continue to play out. And we are seeing a fair amount of activity in that segment. Right. Uh, I think the second sector... Is, is, is really around e-commerce, right? The e-commerce yes. players with profitable models, uh, good market share, 
will continue to build scale and they will need funds. So that activity is going to continue. Uh, third, I would definitely say it's around clean tech, right? That's a big okay. sector. That's been, been a big sector of focus for the government. And we've already yes. seen a lot of private equity strategics playing a role. And I think right. I think that will continue to, to drive deal activity. And, All right. And finally, so healthcare... I would say... Yes. Yeah. Uh, finally, I just want to conclude is that on tech, right? Yes. Within tech, tech services and SaaS, I think these are two... Uh, uh, segments just watch out for yes. in deal activity this year. All right. So SaaS, tech services, clean tech, healthcare, as well as e-commerce. These are the sectors still seeing deal activity, but then there is nervousness on the street. Thank you so much, Raja Lairi, for joining us with that. We'll slip into a short breather on the show, but come back for more from the commodities segment. Manisha Gupta will be joining in.